Please save and commit. Changes committed. Oh no, that's right. That's okay. All right, we are into the terminal count now. Less than 14 minutes to go. Let's give a brief overview of what today's launch will look like, Carolina. Sure. A few seconds before liftoff, we will light the five first stage Delphin engines, and the system will run checks to make sure that everything is nominal. Um, if that looks good, at T0 seconds, um, we will release the hold down release mechanisms for liftoff. Um, a few seconds later, the vehicle will begin its pitch over to continue its trajectory. And after that, the next objective is max Q at one minute and 10 seconds after launch, a very significant objective at that, that is the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. Um, two minutes and 50 seconds into the time. flight, we'll have main engine one cutoff or MECO. And then a few things happen in pretty quick succession. Uh, the fairings will Nagi. separate, and then five seconds later, uh, the first stage and the upper stage will separate from each other. Um, and the upper stage ether engine will light at three minutes and five seconds. It will run for a little over five minutes until we have second engine cutoff Delphin. or SECO at Delphin. eight minutes Reverse and 30 Firefly, seconds. Dude. And then at eight minutes and 40 seconds, we will have the payload deployment signal. Again, we have a mass simulator as our payload on this mission. We will not be deploying it, but we will send that, sim that signal to simulate our deployment. Um, and if we will have achieved all of those steps, we will uh, reach orbit and we will be very s happy with the outcome of this evening's test flight. Uh, Absolutely. Fingers crossed for a very Kodiak, successful Alaska, test flight. Bro, and Andy, just over 12 minutes from now, we're going to listen up. back into the countdown that they're going through the final steps preceding the go, no go poll for tonight. And of course, if all systems OB. are pulled go, Launch we are into the business end of the countdown. So let's listen in. 12 minutes and counting. Rocket 3. AV1 managed power systems. This is Rocket 3.3. All flight helium machines. Helium stack is up. VB1, first stage power. This is live, yeah. Yeah, P, it's live. First stage power active. VB1, upper stage power. Active. VB1, turn on, off, PDBs. Active. Water 1, water system. Water 1, water system, active. This time, Tango, I'd like you to activate launch machine. Launch machine, active. Please toggle lock stopping. Lock stopping, set to true. Yeah, they were they were they were going fast there for a second. Now they're going normal. Yeah, they they active. Well, the the mission director asked the flexor. Okay, per step one fifty, this takes us into the, the pulse for tank capacity. pressurization yeah. and launch. After this point. Any system issue must be called as a three-word hold. If there are no concerns for flight, call before. go. Otherwise, call no go. Red lead? Red lead is go. That did FTS. not happen yesterday. Go. Delphin? Go. Ether? Ether is go. Odin? Odin's go. Inco? Inco is go. Ace? Go. Launcher? Launcher is go. Orbit? Orbit is go. Booster? Go. GNC? GNC is go. FAO. Go. CDH. CDH is go. Tango. Tango is go. Safety. Safety is go. Flight no, it's go. tipsy. It's tiny. Can fit inside of a shipping Tango container. Tango and AV1 manage pulling. Please toggle do only ground pulling. In fact, not only can the rocket AV1 fit in the shipping pulling, container, the entire launch pulling. pad can fit in connexes. You need six you to people to set up a launch site here. And they can set it up anywhere. Tango, are you ready? All you need is a parking lot. Seriously. All this go, is all modular, ahead, and it can all be put into a shipping container, including the fuel tanks. Igniter sequence 703, Victor 3, slot 0. Good load. Engine Alpha is 821, Victor 3. Engine Alpha, 821, Victor 3, slot 0. Loaded. Engine Bravo is 822, Victor 2. Engine Bravo, 822, Victor 2, slot 0. Good load. Engine Charlie is 823, Victor 2. What what you're hearing right Engine now Charlie, is called... Engine Charlie, 823, Victor 2, slot 0, loaded. What you're hearing right now, guys, is uh, they're configuring the vehicle for flight. They're putting in... Uh, basically the required numbers needed to be able to launch the vehicle. No, it's not like a missile code or anything. They're 
they're loading in different guidance data uh, to coordinate with the T zero time. So basically, if they if they they have a launch window where they can launch uh, that they've been permitted to launch in, and at different points through the window, you might need to change stuff because the Earth is spinning, right? So they're, they're configuring the parameters for launch here. RCO That's copy. what all this we stuff is. They're just shit. Hold. Range coordinator on countdown just communicated a hold. Yeah, they did that As you last see, time. We're at eight minutes and, and thirty-eight well. seconds and holding now. A hold has been called, Carolina. Yeah, as you can you can see there there appears to be a valve stuck open near the base of the of the vehicle. It's it's uh, one of our ground side uh, valves that um, the team normal. is working to cycle. Um, this didn't and, happen and last get that time. Fixed. Um, if we uh, do resolve the issue quickly, which we uh, hopefully will be uh, able to resolve, then we would recycle the clock um, at. Uh, T minus 15 minutes with a new T zero. Well, see you tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> some updates as soon as we as soon as we have more information. Um, but Ian, again, you're not wrong. Yes, are in a hold, and we will also share a new T zero as soon as we have that information as well. So standing by. Yeah, you got a sticky valve. That happens all the time, guys. Sticky valves, dude. Pain in the ass. Competing with Delta for the most scrubs. He's just so smart. Just jump over to watch a launch and bummer. Well, let's let's wait a second. <clears throat> Who who's gonna go out there to smack it with a wrench? Imagine some guy walks on, runs into the shot, <laughs> and then just runs away. All right, we're good. <laughs> Nose goes! <laughs> Have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again? That's literally what they're going to do, Dad Sparrow. Serious. Yeah, bro, Handy, they can't catch a break, huh? Uh, dude, Astro, sh Astro shows, like, you know, everybody says, like, oh, space is hard. The Astro Show, it's why space is hard, man. It's just, it's always something stupid. It's always something dumb, like a stupid freaking valve or or some, or some, a bolt that somebody didn't torque all the way down or just a little bit of leakage out of your, like, umbilicals or something. It's always something dumb every frigging time. Or, like, with me, the docking port fix mod, you'd be surprised how often rock, when rockets fail, how, it's, how often it's something stupid like that. The valve is not closed, Ryan. It vented. It's just venting residual right now, see? It's definitely not closed. That's what that's why this is difficult. The devil's in the details. Imagine like reading a novel and being able to recite like a 300-page novel and knowing like what's on page 150 in the fourth paragraph, like second line, like that's how that's how difficult it is that that's how many details need to come together it's like it's that it's tough man this shit is not easy it's really not easy like mission mode is mission mode is a joke compared to this yeah it looks like they cycled it it looks like they closed it fellas All right, we are still in a hold. However, those teams have been able to cycle that valve that we were uh, we were looking at. Literally and, uh, turning it, sounds it on like and turning it back off We're going to be ready to recycle again. back to that T-15 point, the terminal count point, and we'll have a new T-0 here shortly. You'd be surprised, yes, guys. Yes, that's right. The teams uh, were able to. You'd be surprised how often it's, did you try shutting it off and turning it back on again? ULA has done that multiple times with Delta IV. They just turn it off and turn it back on, and it works right. Seriously, they'll get like a bad sensor reading from the GSE and they'll shut everything off and they'll turn it back on. <laughs> and, and, oh, sensor reading is good. <laughs> All right, let's go. Now the next big milestone is going to be after a couple of preliminary steps, there will be the yeah, go, no, go once fuel. again to get they're back top into it off again. the final 10 minutes of the count. Uh, In fact, that's probably the reason why they're cycling the count firework because they leaked out some GS, they leaked out some, some liquid oxygen. 
And if they're leaking it out from the fi if it's leaking from the fill and drain valves, then you got a big deal. Note that when this valve went off, that valve shut off. This is a that I know that that vent line is something that's used for topping off liquid oxygen, meaning their system depressurized. And if their system depressurized, that means they're not topping the tanks off. If they're not topping the tanks off, the fuel will boil off, which is no good. You do, you definitely don't want that. Because if you're boiling off, that means you're going to overpressurize the tanks, A, first and foremost. And if you overpressurize the tanks, it'll pop like a balloon. And B, you don't have enough fuel now. So that's why they're cycling the count, because they lost they lost pressure in their top fuel top-off systems from that dump valve that stayed stuck. This is Carolox, Ishiku. What's with the valve these days? I hope they don't require a third one. No. No, man. It's just a lot of new spacecraft are being made. So they did close that valve. They got it all working because the second vent line is back on again back on again so the thing is topping off once they top off the fuel they'll then they'll cycle the count my guess is that you know the system depressed so you're gonna need to pop the vents on the vehicle for a second which I did see it venting a little bit earlier um, I'll bet you they go at 20 past or something like that that's what I would do whenever you cycle a count like this like, do not pick up where you left off. That's how something blows up. S start over. S start over. Discovery. You had a failure. You, you put the you put the vehicle and the GSE in a failure mode. Shut everything off. Turn it back on. Start from the beginning. Car toy, 71 months. Thanks, buddy. How time flies. I can't believe it, man. Some people are popping in. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to be like, oh, my God, you didn't. Do Dude, some people are popping in with, like, 80-month resubs. And I'm just like, that's, like... You sit there and think about it, man. That's a long time. But anyway, it's good to see you, buddy. How are you? How big is Astra in comparison to Falcon 9 and Dragon? Ice Mage, Astra's rocket could almost fit inside of Falcon 9's fairing. Yeah, this is a tiny little rocket. See the fence? This is just a regular chain link fence. So you and I are probably about like maybe this tall. This is a tiny rocket. The whole, Astra's whole, like, mission goal thing is that they can fit this whole thing in a shipping container. Six guys driving six trucks. So the fuel tanks, the the launch pad, the transporter erector with the rocket, and all the equipment needed to dial them into mission control at their headquarters in San Francisco, or Alameda, if you want to be more technical. Yeah, that's all you need. You can launch literally from anywhere. It's pretty cool. That's pretty. It's a pretty cool piece of kit, you know. Considering it's, I think it's really neat. Damn, how old is this stream? Semi, I've been streaming on Twitch. I've been on Twitch for ten years, and I've been streaming on Twitch for nine. How long is the setup? Six guys can take a week. Could set this up in a weekend. That's what Carolina was saying, Yarg. It's actually pretty freaking cool. Six guys to launch. Six guys to set up the launch. Six guys in mission control. That's it. That's all you need. And guys, like, that's tough. That is a really fucking hard thing to do. I mean, you've seen Rocket Rocket Lab. You've seen their mission control. You see their mission headquarters. Their rocket's bigger than this, and they have, like, six times the people. But it's not much bigger. Yeah, Ice Mage, it's neat. Can you see when people started following you? Y yeah, of course, Bobby. You can. Just click on your name. It should tell you. Bobby, you followed me on January 7th, 2017. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Check this out, dudes. The whole, when I say the whole dang thing fits in a trailer, the whole thing fits in a frigging Connex. It fits in a shipping container. The whole freaking rocket, which is pretty cool. That's cool, man. I think that's really neat. That's I want to kind of like make something like this in KSP, dude. I'm not even kidding. That would be so cool to make this in KSP. Just a little baby rocket. We could just drive it out anywhere and launch it. Set up the pad. Sure, Hibbit. I'd be I'd be psyched to make this in Kerbal. Like I'm not I'm not sure what we do with it, but does it have the Delta V to do many inclinations? I mean, well, they're launching from Kodiak, Sarah, so if it can make it into 
All right, we are still in that hold, but we are expecting polar, a new sure, Team Zero man, shortly. The teams have been able to cycle that valve that we were seeing. Uh, Dude, all they need to do, they can launch from Kodiak, they can launch from Vandenberg, they can launch from KSC, they can launch from Boca Chica if they really wanted to. They could launch from Mid-Atlantic, they could Wallops, they could go anywhere. You could launch this thing anywhere. Anywhere there's a flat piece of concrete and some electrical power. That's it. Time, and then the teams will go back into go no go polling uh, to proceed with the launch attempt. So standing by for that T zero call from flight Joker, director Chris Hoffman. Old Joker, you're November 26, 2015, dude. It's flight on countdown, picking back oh. up. Tango, please let me know when you can deactivate and inspect the launch machine to update our T zero. They could barrel. Work deactivating launch machine. Inspecting, ready to set T zero. Hour is six. Hour six. Minutes one six. Minutes one six. Second zero zero. Second zero zero. Twelve minutes out. Save and commit. Changes committed. Oh no, my clock's off. Then let Ten me know minutes. When ready to activate. It's well, it says it up in the corner there, moron. Yeah, it's got googly eyes on him, man. Activate. See, six dudes. That's it. That's all you need. Six people. And as yeah, you boss. just heard, our new T0 is 10.16 like, p.m. Pacific time, or 6.16 really UTC. Like some dude, the Astro teams are now 9 minutes and... Dude, this is like actually someone just building rockets in their damn garage. That's what that's what Astra is. It's it, it Like, dude, I think it's cool. I think that's wicked. That's Dude, that's pretty damn impressive for some guys building a damn rocket in the garage. Ain't goes, go. Ace. Go. Launcher. Launchers, go. Orbit. Go. Booster. Go. GNC. Go. FAO. Go. CDH. CDH is go. Tango. Tango is go. Safety. Safety is go. Flight is go. Tango, confirm that an AV1 managed it's pulling. Like we are still metal. in ground mode. It's like sheet nothing. We are currently very, in it's very inexpensive. Turning only ground pulling on. Do only ground. Is that the true? Dolphin, do you require new sequences? Sequences have not changed. Configuration Copy. is... Ether, please provide me with your flight sequence for tonight. Good enough. Ether flight sequence, 8, 0, 6, on, Victor, guys. 3. Vastrobosh. Ether sequence, 8, 0, 6, Victor, 3. Title, all hosses, no bosses. Yeah, zero dust. Zero I think they're loading. neat. You just heard the teams have pulled go for launch. We're at T-minus eight load. minutes and counting. Tango and AV-1 manage pulling. Please toggle. Do both ground and guidance. Do both ground and guidance. Set to true. Delphin, please confirm GSE igniter system is ready for launch. Ground service equipment igniter. Igniter system. These guys basically launch. stick a lighter up the nozzle of the engine to start it. First stage engines don't need to restart with this rocket. So don't put the starter mechanism FTS, on the rocket. You can make it lighter that way. That's what they're talking passes, about. Green and nominal. They're basically priming the igniters. Teamwork. And the, like I said, the igniters are six freaking basically spark plugs that they stick up the freaking uh, up the nozzle of the rockets. I, they, they used to show it, but Logic they don't show it much Issued anymore. and received on both AFTs. Hey, Astro, what's up, man? Copy. I don't know if Delphins are 3D printed, Shrub. I forget. Who owns the lot they're on? The military? Yes, this is Kodiak. Uh, missile testing range in Alaska. Come on, guys. You can do it. Pretty much, Mab. Yep. Yep. Hot poker up the jacksy, dude. Absolutely. Yeah, that's Tango how they this fire. This time, verify that the vehicle is ready for launch aside from tank pressures. Uh, blue lines are met. Looks good. What is the Jaxi? Tail end. Hey, Alex. Not yet, Alex. If you're just joining us, we're at six and a half minutes and counting. Everything on track for a liftoff at 10.16 p.m. Pacific time. Teams have pulled go for launch and are now into the final steps of the countdown. They're still topping. Almost done, though. They shut the top vent off. It's just residual now. RCO flight on countdown at this time. I am looking for final range green and launch authorization for this evening. This is RCO. Range is green. You are authorized to launch. Range coordinator is Thank air you. traffic control for the rocket. And you just heard the range has authorized to go for launch. Range green. 
It is small, Euchre, man. It's a tiny little rocket. Once again, Astra's whole thing is that they can fit the rocket in a shipping container. And it, not, not just the rocket, the rocket and the launch pad. Six guys driving six trucks can drive the rocket, the launch pad, the fuel tanks, and anything else you need. All the toolboxes and everything, six guys, six trucks. You can drive Hanging it anywhere. At this time in the launch machine, I would like you to enable launch. It's supposed to reach launch orbit enabled. port. Additive ink and Elstrom. That's cool. Five minutes. Now, T minus five minutes and counting. Again, everything on track and nominal for That's right, off. Matt. Small sat launching his, uh, by make the rocket's not made out of anything particularly crazy. No exotic metals. It's just steel. I'm, I'm pretty. Um, it could be aluminum sheets, but I, I forget. The, the whole point is they make this thing out of very, 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 very inexpensive components, and the fact that it's a small launcher, you can employ them in mass. Hence their four four decimal serial number, or four digit serial number. They're they're they want to basically because the rockets are so easy to make. They want to basically make thousands of them. RCO flight on countdown verify range will be recording telemetry at liftoff. This is RCO. I can confirm range is recording telemetry. Thank you. Four minutes. Liquid oxygen in RP1 in Uckerman. Reminder to control room, if you require RF data, please be prepared to switch over your Grafana pages at liftoff. FSO flight on countdown. Please be prepared to issue option command at T plus 162, calling out at event. The hell's Griffin? Roger, 162. I don't know what that is. Coming up on three minutes and counting. Again, we are three minutes away from liftoff. That's right, drummer. 180 seconds till ignition. Three this minutes. This is Asha's fourth orbital launch attempt for LV, and this We're is LV triple zero seven into the business end of the countdown. Let's listen in for the final steps and liftoff. I'm racing after this, Bobby. Reminder to all that any three-word hold from here on out is an immediate abort, regardless of source. Data visualization. Tango, too. please cool. turn off igniter heaters. Igniter heaters, coming off. Good current response. Okay. FTS, you are good to send a master enable and watchdog on AFTU. Flight termination system. That's the abort system. Inward. Usually it's a, an explosive packed in a structurally sound, like a structurally strong area. Uh, that it, and if, if something goes wrong with the rocket, they'll, they'll trigger the explosive and it'll blow out a piece of the rocket and the whole thing will blow up. Two minutes. They Master enable and watchdog sent and received on both AFTs. Okay, they have armed the flight control, the uh, flight termination system. Where's it lifting off? Kodiak Island, Alaska. Guys, that's why the launch is at such a weird time. T minus 145, all systems nominal at this time. Interesting, C22. It just shuts the engine off. Oh, okay, Mutter. All right, cool, cool. 90 seconds. During launch, we'll have live telemetry Ace, on the bottom time, right you of your can screen. Start PSD recordings. It would done. be in the fuel and tank or next to recording. it, Matt. Yeah. Also done. But it looks like their termination system just shuts the rockets off. I, I think that's right, Mutter, because on the last flight, on flight six, that's exactly what happened. They just shut the engines off and the vehicles started tumbling. 60 seconds, vehicles on internal control. All right, here we go. They, the onboard computers are in control of everything. Mutter, 
Meaning all the all the flight controllers are just kind of stage locks tank pressurizing. Sitting there and go. First stage fuel tank pressing. Okay. You notice that the lower vent is closed. Thirty seconds. So the lower vent goes to the first stage. Twenty. Come on, guys, you can do it. Fifteen. Water on. Ten. The system is on. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. There it goes! There it goes! There it goes! Yeah! Alright guys, go! LV0007 has cleared the pad and yes! is on its way to awesome. space. Our next objective is Max Q. Come on! On the left side of your screen you'll see the progress of the vehicle uh, through Into the clouds. milestones. And you can see velocity and altitude. LV-0007 ascending through some clouds over Kodiak, now looking at onboard views from the rocket. There's not much you can tell from this camera angle, but that, that step, look, everything looks second, real good, man. That looked altitude. real good. Vehicle's tracking downrange. And the vehicle's just started pitching downrange. Yeah, everything sounded right there. The vehicle right is there. now through maximum aerodynamic pressure, the point of maximum aerodynamic stress on the vehicle. Next up is main engine cutoff, or MECO, at just about T plus 2 minutes and 30 this seconds. This is way minus cargo. Not not a lot, Huzzah. Not a lot. I don't know the exact weight. It's enough to be carried around by a truck. Over 300 meters per second at an altitude of 12 kilometers. Yeah, those sparks are normal. It's just and combustion byproducts. Everything appears by to be nominal at this time. Yeah, that, that's totally fine, guys. Everything's looking good, guys. That looked perfect. Vehicle's on track downrange. We're confirming that the vehicle is on track downrange and all systems appear nominal. Nearly at the end of our first stage flight. Come on. You can see as Staging the rocket ascends through the thinner parts deal. of the atmosphere, you can see the engine plume expanding. That's a gorgeous shot from that onboard camera. Thomas should con commentate golf, dude. He's got the voice for it, man. It's a great shot at that onboard. Yep. Yep. There's the pr there's no there's no air up there, so and the gases are contained. They can just, just kind of go off in all directions. Now. All right. The, the, these pictures probably aren't going to tell us much unless they show a staging view, guys. What, what you want to do is listen. Good signal strength. Vehicles tracking downrange. Listen to that guy. Option set. Confirmed. Option as received. Oh, there's a flame out. And we've just heard the call out for main engine cutoff. Fairing separation confirmed. There we have fairing separation. Come on. And Light. a successful stage separation. Come on. Look at those gorgeous onboard views. Yes. And that is the ignition yeah. of the upper stage ether engine. Awesome. That was T plus sick. three minutes, 22 seconds and counting. The upper better. stage now taking control yeah. of the flight. Teams are here in Alameda very excited and rightfully so. Three and a half minutes in the flight. Everything on track so far. That's awesome. Perfect. Again, that this burn lasts just over five minutes. We would expect second engine cutoff at T plus eight minutes and 30 seconds. And this second stage's job is to get the payload and itself all the way up to orbital velocity. We're looking for the altitude of 500 kilometers uh, for this mission. Currently passing 200 kilometers already into space, but of course yeah, you got to get go, that man, extra right? velocity and altitude to stay in orbit. That's the big ticket. First stage had a lot of delta. But again, everything nominal at this time. Yeah, the the 
upper stage guys looks like two golf balls just kind of next to each other with an engine strapped to the okay, back and our a mission payload control strapped team to the front. Still holding on to the controls, and here we have uh, the crew of folks at Astra who very happy with the outcome of today's flight so far. And we are still holding on for, uh, <laughs> yeah, wrong for that yard, uh, yeah. second engine cutoff. Longitudinal, not transverse. What's the payload for this mission? They got a dummy payload just to make sure that the rocket works. Separation looked great. Now, guys, the furthest that they've made it into space previously was uh, they made it about probably nine tenths of the way the there. To be they had a good plus first five minutes now. Vehicle now over three hundred kilometers and out. They had a good first stage and then a good second stage on flight five, uh, but they didn't get the fuel mixture right on the second stage and it f it burned the fuel too fast. Uh, they didn't get the mixture correct, so they were like maybe a hundred meters a second short of orbit. That's the furthest they've been into space. So, I mean, even then, even that, that's better than most. <laughs> it's better than, it's further into space than Blue Origin. Like, <laughs> not to harp on Blue. I like Blue, but that's still pretty damn impressive for a bunch of guys building a rocket in a garage in San Francisco. A little bit of plume in the night sky south of Kodiak. Again, this mission going to an 86 degree inclination, so a nearly polar orbit flying pretty much straight south from Kodiak. <laughs> Boss, oof. Uh, 06 was the drifter rocket. Yep. It, it maybe I think it was 300 Six element. I think you're right. They were just short, man. They just barely got so far. Just that close, man. Yeah, W. Yep, yep. Okay, so... so we've got a little bit over uh, two minutes remaining in this uh, upper stage flight. So the magic number you want to see right uh, here... 400 kilometers... Uh, the magic number you want to see right here is 7,600. We're now less than 100 kilometers. From if this our number hits 7,600, we are good. We're A-OK. -okay. They're aiming for a 500 kilometer orbit at 86 degrees inclined. That's just basically a, it's it's kind of a sun synchronous, but it's kind of not. It it could you could get to sun synchronous from here uh, with this rocket. It kind of it's just a dud orbit. Vehicle now traveling five and a half kilometers every second and an altitude Everything of 434 kilometers. Again, that live telemetry is in the bottom right hand of yes, your screen. Yes, it is. And on the left, you're seeing the different milestones. We're into second stage flight at T plus seven minutes, about a minute and a half left to go. Polar orbits are tough to get Again, into. And there's here. no deployed payload on board the upper stage, so as long as this second stage burn completes successfully, there will be a de simulated deployment signal, and then that's it. The main objective is to reach orbit, and we're just over a minute away from that happening. Once again, magic number is 7,600. That's what you need. At least I'm, I'm pretty sure for this type of orbit. I could be I could be a little bit wrong. If they get over 7,000, that means we're, we're pretty damn check. close. What's tough about polar orbits? Well, mine, when you're spinning with from a polar orbit, you have to counteract the a force of the, the, the Earth spinning. Watching close because if you just launched, right? If you just launched and the Earth kept spinning, you'd end up being in not a completely polar orbit. It would be tilted. Um, so like when you get into a polar orbit, you have to kind of take a right after you launch and that's to counteract the spinning force that's imparted on the vehicle because you launch from a planet that's spinning, right? Second stage burn coming to close here shortly. They, they, polar orbits tend to take a lot more delta V to get into orbit because you have to counteract that spinning force. Stand by for second stage engine cutoff. We're over 7,000 over here. Yeah, my polar orbits are hard to get into. I don't know off the top of my head, Joker. I think 7,600, guys, is what we're looking for. That's looking good, baby! And hey, there you have right. it, orbital insertion, second engine cutoff, and Astra's LV-0007 has successfully good reached job, orbit dudes. as a new orbital rocket. 
Hey! And there is See? the view of the simulated payload, the mass simulator perfect. on top. Mission Freaking success. Freaking perfect, dude! Just a nine minute trip to orbit, and Astra is in orbit. And oh, I speak for the team, everyone is That was hugging, the first time they've never done that here. before. We are absolutely bursting with pride at LV. Good job, dudes. Zero seven, lucky number seven. Now send that payload, this Commander. Let's get out of here. This represents a huge, huge step in our mission to improve life on Earth from space. Astra's fourth orbital launch attempt, LV-0007, the first bubbly, one not to yet, achieve guys. orbit, a successful Send that test payload and signal and then we'll go. Paving the way for future customer He's missions. He's the flight director, Joker. Very exciting to see here. Mm. Absolutely gorgeous views all the way. And a very happy team here it in Alameda. I'm sure a very yeah. happy team up in Kodiak as well. There is your flight path right down the middle. Right in the track. Perfect. Doggo! The dog's like, what are you humans doing? I don't understand. I want to say to everyone who's joined us, thank you so much for sticking with us. And hey, again, LV. to confirm, uh, we have job, accomplished uh, our congrats. main objective for today. LV0007 has reached orbit with its test payload. I'm so proud of You're our incredible milestone for Astra and all of our partners, a major step forward in our mission. Um, and we will continue to provide innovative, low-cost, and nimble launch capabilities riding on this evening's success. From the NASA Spaceflight team, this is Thomas Burkhardt, News Director. I just I want to say a big thank you to command. Astra for trusting NASA Spaceflight with this broadcast, being able to see firsthand the first or successful orbital oh, launch they got of the a champagne. new company's rocket is just something incredible. It's incredible to be here with the teams just from our perspective. This is just so cool to experience and a huge congratulations, Carolina, to you and the entire Astra team on this accomplishment. It is no small feat. And of course, the iterative, iterative path to orbit, it took, you know, you learned a whole lot on the way there, but uh, this has just been so cool to watch. Thank you so much for partnering with us to do this. Thank you so much, Thomas. Let's go celebrate. <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. This has been super cool. Again, Astra has successfully yeah. restored with LV0007, <laughs> and uh, we are gonna uh, stick around for just a couple seconds here. I believe we're gonna have a, a quick visitor here. <laughs> Chris Kemp. Mr. Chris Kemp, how about comms with us really quick? Hey guys, how's it going? It's going well. Of course, Chris Kemp, CEO of Astra. Chris, congratulations to you and the team. How are you feeling right now? Uh, absolutely incredible. The team's worked so hard on this uh, for so many years, and uh, this just really seeing load iteration off, after iteration, failure after failure lead to success. Uh, everyone is just incredibly uh, passionate about <laughs> corks are flying. Oh, somebody <laughs> popped the cork. You uh, hear that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an incredibly hard thing to do. Uh, continuing to Hell do it yeah. is incredibly hard. Uh, we have rocket uh, number, serial number 8, 9, 10 in production. So uh, we're just getting started. Send it, baby. Absolutely. Chris, thank yeah. you so much thank for allowing so much. us to be involved in this. And best of luck going forward and go celebrate. Indeed. Thank you, guys. Bye. Oh, man. Again, I don't know how Thomas so is keeping us, cool. I'd Chris, be hyped. I'd be like, dude, you did it. Yeah. Team. And most of all, everyone <laughs> watching at home, thanks for tuning in. A uh, big thank you to Astra and partnering with us to help make this broadcast happen. Couldn't have done it without you. Um, I would be able to. Dude, I'd be right there. I'd be like, yo, Astra let me pop this. Stay tuned for future space flight coverage on NASA Space Flight. You know? <laughs> with this mission success, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up and sign off for tonight. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> No, I'd go pop the cork right there, and I'd be like, yo, give me this. You know? That's awesome. That's freaking great. I'm super freaking proud of those guys. They, Dude, they... All right, so what Chris and what they were talking about, man, they, they've tried a bunch of times, man. It, the vehicle slid off the pad, or it blew up, or it didn't make it, or they didn't get a mixture right. Uh, but, uh, you know, to finally nail it, that must feel like rock stars, man. They must feel freaking like rock stars right now. <sighs> Dude, that's so cool. Oh, man. That's pretty wild, dude. Guy freaking, guy freaking built it and they, they built that thing in a freaking garage, man. Hey, all right.
Grats from Firefly there. Grats from... Oh, they got the grats from Thomas Serbukin. That's very good. I am... I tell you what, chat. I am... I am going to use that rocket to launch a bunch of NASA payloads up into space. We are going to... We're going to use that rocket and then we're, we're going to launch all kinds of things. So, I just want to thank everybody and I guess I am going to go over back into racing now. What a great way to end the day. There you go, Laser. That was awesome. It was good. Astroproof Sialkovsky right again. There you go. Launching it out of a out of a freaking bunch of shipping crates, dude. That's pretty that's pretty damn impressive, man. That's really cool. I'm very, I'm super proud of those guys. That's awesome. 